because uh, basically they were involved as, uh, as you're learning these things together. Um, so let's talk a little bit about um, a critical aspect of clicker training, which has to do with we're very used to always saying, no, stop, get down, you know, all of these kind of things because we have to. And it's very obvious when a dog is doing something we don't want. What takes a little bit of training and a little bit of changing your perspective is how to start to look, uh, you know, yes, you're going to notice what you don't want. But in place of that, what do you want? That's the whole crux of the issue. For example, if you have a dog that's jumping on you, jump, jump, jumping on your visitors, you know, the initial uh, way you handle that is like, oh, no, get off. You know, after the dog already has paw prints all over your chest and your neighbor's about ready to go home. Um, instead, what do we think about instead? What do I want? And there's a myriad of ways to, to come up with different manners to keep your dog from, from jumping. The one I personally use is I like to install a, what I call a personal bubble. I want the dog to maintain about one and a half, two feet away from me or from my neighbors, my guests, whoever. Um, and it's the dog's job to figure out where that space is. In fact, that's the, the word I use. That's the cue. I ask for space as people come in and the dog figures out what that amount is. I don't have to ask. I don't have to make them. I don't have to lure them. It's their job to figure out, okay, where do I need to be? Um, and that's an example then of teaching a dog, what do I want you to do when I don't want you to jump? Um, the other thing about clicker training, you know, really it's not just, um, it's not just for obedience. Clicker training is really helpful for sort of changing a dog's emotional state. Their bodies and their emotions are very tied in with one another. And you can really give a, do give a dog a lot of very precise feedback with a click. Um, and catch brief moments of, for dogs that are fearful, for example, dogs that are aggressive, you catch those moments um, when a dog is showing different things, different sorts of body language, different sorts of uh, feelings, you click those moments and they begin to offer that more and more and more. So it's very powerful for behavior modification. It's not just for obedience. Um, so we want our dogs to learn certain behaviors you know, we all want the sits and the downs and all the things we're going to cover in class. But more important than that, really, is we want we want to teach our dogs how to learn. Um, so that you can then later on, you can teach your dog anything. You can teach your dog to get your beer out of the fridge. It can teach your dog to, you know, uh, whatever. Go, go and catch your two-year-old and bring it back in a gentle way. You know, all these different things. You can teach your dog anything. But the key is to figure out how it is that they learn and how it is to communicate what it is you're looking for. So in a, in a nutshell, these are the two things we'll begin with. One of them has to do with um, capturing certain behaviors. There are some things that dogs do that we love. We, they're just right in and of themselves. For example, um, uh, say you've got a dog that does an adorable head turn, and he just looks cute, and you love that. So. That's what you do. You capture that moment. You hang out and you observe your dog, and at moments when he looks at you, you click. Give him that treat. And pretty and he'll be like, really? And then click, treat. Get that head turn, click, treat. Pretty soon that dog is offering that head turn like crazy. Um, the key to that then is we put a name to that behavior, uh, whatever you want to call it, you know, look cute, look cute, or whatever you want to say to him. And he er, does that. It's a great party game for your friends. But anyway, um, that's an example of just capturing something which happens normally. The What we're going to work a lot with has to do with shaping a behavior. And that's where you start with something that's maybe easy for the dog to do and is on the way to something you want. For example, if I'm trying to teach a dog to go to a mat um, when, the, when somebody comes to the door, then I'm going to have the dog go to the mat, maybe it's enough for one foot to be on, I click and treat, that becomes easy for the dog, the next thing I'm going to do is I maybe want two feet, and then I raise my criteria to four feet, then I raise my criteria to sitting on the mat when the door opens. So this is the way you start with something small, a small, easily achievable behavior for the dog, and then you build it, and I'll show you how to build it, and that's what we'll be doing in class. We won't just be stopping with sits, or downs or whatever, we're building it to make behaviors that really stick and, and um, are really reliable out there in the real world. So um, that those two concepts, the, the capturing 
and then the shaping that we'll be doing together. Um, in terms of the foundational skills, you know, you and your dog are both going to be learning skills as we go through the class. For the dog, we basically separate it into um, attention and focus. That's one of the first modules we'll be working on. Um, another one is public appearances, how, uh, how your dog appears in public and how the dog can, can greet and be reliable in public. Um, another module has to do with teamwork, working together with your dog and the dog uh, working with you. Um, another module has to do with communication and connection um, with your dog. And then another module, which is super important, has to do with self-control, impulse control. Um, and it's funny, all these different aspects, we kind of weave them in among all the different behaviors that we're working on, on with the dog. But um, there are different aspects in every one of the different modules. Um, in terms of you and your skills, um, first of all, the first thing for you to learn is the clicker mechanics, which we're going to cover in just a second, how to actually use the clicker. Um, another thing that's really important for you to learn is how to use reinforcement instead of correction. How to, um, how, to, how to get your dog to do the things you want, rather than stopping the things you don't want. We'll talk about shaping, again, as we talked about, and uh, cueing. How to put a name to things so that uh, your dog knows exactly what it is you're looking for. And then a really important, critical thing for, uh, for you to learn is real caref careful observation. Dogs, they really live in these micro-moments. And we're used to just seeing the broad, general view of everything. But when you begin to really look carefully at, at a dog and their body and small things that they're doing as they're adjusting and figuring things out, your observation skills get really, really good. So you'll find that difference from week one all the way into week six, how good your own skills become. Um, so when I'm talking about a, a behavior, um, a lot of people will use the word command or something, and I always like to use the word behavior instead, because behavior to me is it's a specific action you're asking the dog to do based on a cue that you gave him. And uh, so, that, so that's just terminology. And so in terms of the behaviors that we're going to cover over this session, um, there are ten of them, which essentially are, um, we'll play a little bit with capturing and shaping, so you build up those alteration skills. We'll talk a little bit about a down and a down stay, we'll work on that. We'll work on leave it, or what I often call mine and take it, having to do with when a dog can have something when he can't. Um, we'll talk about, along the line of focus, uh, there's a lot of name recognition and turning to you fast, 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 at the you know whiplash response when he hears his name. Um, we'll work on uh, some polite leash walking, which I think is really important. Um, we'll work on recall, probably, if not the most important uh, behavior that we do. Um, sit, targeting, where a dog comes to. Uh, in the beginning, we're going to do a nose touch to the hand. You can begin to have all kinds of different body parts that we'll uh, use as targets. But anyway, that's, that's a good one for the dog. We'll use space, which space is that same one I talked about in terms of um, teaching your dog a personal bubble around people or around you, around children. It's endlessly valuable. Um, and then one that I have included in your packet, super important, is called Relax on a Mat. And it would be very simple, as you read through this exercise, really take the time to do it in the way that it's explained on the page. Because it would be real simple for you to just ask for a down for your dog and just have your dog go down on the mat. Mm -hmm. What we're looking for in Relax on the Mat is completely different. What we're looking for is the dog learning himself how it feels in his body when he is relaxed and how to find that for himself. So it's really important that you let that process happen. So I'm sending that to you, you know, a week before class so you can work with that and, and play with it for the week. And that'll actually be the first thing you'll do when you'll come to class. Everybody will get their dogs into a little bit of a relaxation mode. Because everybody, when you first come to class, it's a little, you know, it's a little nervous because people don't know each other, the dogs don't know each other. Dogs are in different emotional states, strange place, strange smells. So everybody starts from this point of relaxation, how to, how to be comfortable and how to have their muscles relax before the dogs begin to, uh, to work with anything else. And that becomes, really that's the best state from which a dog can, can learn and retain anyway.